I don't know, we'll have to see. I didn't know last time till I was that close. And then there we were. Now it's 29 years since we last saw you in New Zealand. Why, why so long and why include New Zealand this time? Well, um, what happens is you go down to Down Under, as we call it, and um, nearly always there's an Australian tour, the offing, you know. And then I would talk to the promoter and sort of say, OK, and what's happening down there? So when you're going to Australia, and I'll say, well, how about New Zealand? And um, th they can give you a pretty good line about, well, with the cost of sort of flying everything over and the, the amount of people and so on, so on, so on, so on. And the, some promoters will tend to do a little U-turn there and you, you end up with an Australian tour, you know. But this time I got in early and I said, look, if we're going all that way, you know, let's go to Australia, but let's try and get to New Zealand. Why? Do you have pleasant memories oh, of it? Oh, yeah, or? I've got very pleasant memories of it. I feel a relationship with them. You know, I don't think I'll feel strange walking out in front of a bunch of New Zealanders. You know, be like, you know, there's some connection. New Zealand in 1964, our first and only bout of Beatlemania. The symptoms were mass hysteria and mass purchase of hit records. John, Paul, George and Ringo were four lads from Liverpool who took New Zealand and the world by song. Of such adoration, not just in New Zealand, but, but around the world. How could you handle that? Um, one, two, hey, 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 ha, 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 ha,
behave yourself. We'll keep quiet on that. This is, this is a sensible interview. It's now. 60 minutes. No, no, no. Listen, that was then, you know. I wasn't married. It was allowed. But um, now, ooh, more than my life's worth, Gov. What's an old man of 50 doing touring? Well, I asked myself some mornings. Uh, the thing was, the last tour we did a couple of years ago, um, I thought, well, you know, I'll have a go at touring and see if I like it. It's been a long time and stuff. And I was worried about I was going to get really sort of knackered at the end of it and really be thinking, oh, my God, you know, another holiday in or something. But in fact, uh, we ended up enjoying it very much. And the audiences were brilliant. To get out and see them is a big uh, tonic. Um, so with them and the enjoyment of touring and stuff, the whole thing, you know, turned out to be quite a success. <laughs> In London, a couple of weeks ago, a virtual dress rehearsal for the tour. We're going to do some songs tonight. This won't be the full show because it's not all ready yet. But we'll give you a selection from all the stuff we've been rehearsing, all right? And this song's called Get Out of My Way. Now you're writing a song that's getting banned by MTV and probably not getting airplay. I mean, why, why again, I'm sorry to bring the age up no, again, right. but why a 50-year-old using... Uh, using the well-known F-word in big ways well, bickering. you know, now the thing is, you know, um, at 50, you know, and someone who's read books all your life and you've read good authors and stuff, you're not really surprised by that language in art. But a lot are surprised, shocked even. After all, this is Mr. Clean who's getting dirty. Fucking it up for everyone, for everyone. You can't be surprised that it's not getting the airplay that it might No, 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 I'm, I'm not sort of doing it for airplay, really. It's not to do with that. It's when you write songs, um, songs appear onto you. You know, they kind of slip into your mind and you sort of think, what is this? Well, I'll get it down, whatever it is. And uh, in that song, the F word came in. Instead of saying mucking it up for everyone, which would have been acceptable, I didn't. I used another word. Everyone. And I don't regret it. Um, I don't really see it as being very shocking. What is it about the environment that, that does seem to affect you? Because, I mean, that's the issue that you've championed for, for now some time, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the awkward thing is, you know, people sometimes say to me, oh, you're just doing it for publicity. People like you are doing that. But as I said, I'm a father of four kids. Um, and we all, anybody, kids and grown-ups alike, you know, heard about this thing a few years ago, which is this whacking great hole in the ozone layer. Now, the first thing I think we all thought was, don't worry, they'll ban these CFCs and they'll make all this legislation, we'll be all right, and maybe it'll close back up again, you know, whoo, hope so. But that's not what's happened. They've been saying, maybe in 10 years' time, you know, for various reasons. And I sense lots of people seething and going, no, you know, do it. Something. But they've got no voice. They can vote these people in, but then they can turn around and not do it. So someone like me, who is... I, in many ways, just like them, as I say, as a parent, and with these kind of concerns. And that's only just one of them to symbolize this kind of mess. You know, the oil pollution and stuff is another. Um, someone like me just feels I've got to use this voice, this opportunity of talking to you, and hence people in New Zealand, in order to talk some sense instead of just go, oh, yeah, you want to know what I brushed my teeth with this morning? Wow, we had great fun. It's like I've got to use some of this time to say, look, you know, any politicians watching or any people watching, I really agree with you, and I'm saying it for you, you know, that we want that hole closed. Please. What sort of material can New Zealand audiences expect to see in this tour? A um, bit of old, a bit of new, but something borrowed, something blue. Uh, we just, a few years ago, I started doing Beatle tunes again, where for a number of years I didn't want to do them particularly after the breakup of the Beatles because it was all a bit tense and um, we all elected to not really do Beatles songs to try and get on with our new lives but um, I recently sort of rediscovered them all so and do you like few... them? yeah I like them they're, they're kind of fresh you know uh, after all that time it's like I'm relearning them 
can't remember them from 30 years ago. And how much longer are the albums going to, the Paul McCartney albums going to keep coming out? Well, I reckon until about 93, I think, the age of about 93 is when I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to have to slow down then and definitely get into the ballads. I mean, do you really see touring just going on and on until, until the walking stick stage? Well, to, you know, I used to, I mean, obviously I keep asking myself, wait a minute, is it seemly for a, a gentleman of my, you know, venerable age to be up there? I've always expected age to stop me. But I get to the next barrier and then kind of look over it and think, oh, this isn't too bad. I mean, you know, maybe it will be. And I'm always kind of looking at it, this is going to be terrible, we're going to knacker me out completely. Get over there, do a tour and think, this is great. I love, this is what I love. You know, and I'm, all, I'm reconvinced again. But, uh, you know, I, I convince myself by looking at people like Ray Charles, who's older than me and still gorgeous. People like uh, Muddy Waters, who kind of worked to quite an old age. And the perception of what old age is seems to be changing for me anyway. I could just be fooling myself. But at the moment, you know, we seem to be having a bit of fun.